welcome to section 3.5 where we cover transcription. So we've brought up transcription before, which is going to be this process of converting DNA into RNA. DNA, if you remember, is going to be composed of nucleotides. It's a nucleic acid. Nucleotide's the monomer. But it'll have two strands, the double helix, versus RNA is going to have one strand. Uh, there's some other differences, different sugar. You'll see that you have uracil in RNA, if you remember, instead of thymine, which you have in DNA. Uh, but in general, RNA is going to be fairly similar to DNA. The difference being is RNA is going to be more versatile because it's always going to be a copy of DNA. And so the DNA is still there, untouched, if you will, uh, while the RNA can be messed with. So when we're doing this whole DNA to RNA bit, the first part of our central dogma, the first idea is where does this happen? And so this is going to be occurring in the nucleus of a cell. Now we're assuming that this is a eukaryote. If it's a prokaryote, everything happens in the cytoplasm essentially. But in eukaryotes, this will happen in the nucleus. For who's doing it, it'll be an enzyme called RNA polymerase. If you remember from replication, uh, which is when we made DNA make a copy of itself, we used DNA polymerase to build a new strand. In this case, because we're building RNA, we call it RNA polymerase. Uh, how is this going to happen? We're going to have where DNA has two strands, and what we're going to do is we're just going to pull one of these strands away. So we're going to kind of make this bubble, typically, is what you'll see. Uh, and then we're going to come in and make an RNA copy of one side of that DNA. And so once we split that DNA, that DNA now is away from its complementary base pair. So if we have the RNA complementary nucleotide come in and bind temporarily, it allows us to make essentially a copy. And so now we've got the code that was in DNA in this RNA piece, which can then leave and go away and the DNA goes back to how it was. So just keep in mind, transcription will not change the DNA in any way. It's going to temporarily pull it apart and put it right back together just like it was. So nobody knows anything happened. It's the RNA that we're after. It's the RNA that we're going to mess with. And as for the why, for us to do the central dogma, for us to do this process that we will call protein synthesis, to build proteins. Okay, synthesis, not synthesis. Uh, so to do protein synthesis, we have to get the code on how to make that protein from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. And so that's what we need this RNA for because the RNA is going to go from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. And that's where the rest of this process of the central dogma is going to occur is in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, big picture then, just to make sure we're coming back to this. So we're focusing on the first part of the central dogma we've already brought up before. So we're just focusing on the DNA to RNA part because we need RNA to go through the process of translation, which will be the next process, which once again, big picture, is all about building this protein. Or, why do I keep doing that? Or, or the other way of saying it, protein synthesis. That's our ultimate goal. Next, the details of how this occurs. I'm not going to go insane here. There's a lot more detail you can get. But I want to go through at least some of the basics. This processes start out at something called initiation. So this should be pretty straightforward. You know, you initiate something, you start it. You'll see it ends at something called termination. There's a sequence called the terminator sequence. And that should make sense. You know, that's where it ends. So at this initiation, there's going to be a region at the very start of a gene called a promoter. And so the promoter is going to be important because it's the one that lets RNA polymerase know where to bind. So if we're going to start doing transcription, we have to have a promoter. The promoter doesn't necessarily need to be copied. It's not something that's coding for a protein. What it's doing is saying, here you go. This is the start of a gene, so bind here and then just keep going. And then you need that terminator at the end to let it know when it's done coding for the protein. Because your DNA is in these huge strands that are part of your chromosome. And each strand can contain, in some cases, thousands of genes, certainly hundreds in almost all cases. And so if you're doing this, you have to have multiple instances of start here, stop here, start here, stop here. You can't just treat the whole sequence as one gene. That, that wouldn't do anything useful. It wouldn't make a, a protein that would be able to help us. And so these are the sequences that just kind of like uh, in our language, we have capital letters to start a sentence and a period at the end. That's kind of what this is. It's that capital letter. It's that period at the end that's really there where you could make it lowercase. It wouldn't change the word. But the capital letter is there as a Q. 
And that's essentially what this is. It's saying start here, end here. In the middle, we have elongation, which is where RNA polymerase actually makes the RNA copy. You can see it here dangling off. You can see at the end it's separate. So you keep the RNA. This is just going to go right back together. So the DNA will go back to being just like it was. So the elongation part is where we actually get the code for the protein. So the promoter and the terminator, those guys are more regulatory. They just kind of say start and stop. Uh, but we are going to get this code that tells us how to build a protein, and that's what's in between. So that's the part of the gene that actually says, this is why we're doing this. This is how you can construct something. Now in eukaryotes, before we're done, there's one additional step that can occur, something called RNA processing. And so what happens here is oftentimes genes can be used in multiple different ways. Kind of like if you get a Lego set, you can't just build one thing. You could build multiple things. It just depends upon which parts of your kit that you use and how you use them. And so RNA processing is where we'll take this mRNA, is usually what we'll be building. Remember, that's the code. So we'll make this mRNA, drain transcription. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take certain chunks of that gene, that, that piece that we just made of RNA, and we're going to cut those out. And we call those sections that we cut out introns. And so when we say intron, what we really mean is these ones are non-coding. So that means they're not part of what we have at the end that codes for a protein. The exons will be the parts that are left at the end. So these will be the ones that do code for the protein that's made. So before we're done, we're going to do something called splicing, remove the chunks that we don't care about. It's like editing, where you might go through and look at someone's story and say, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this. You know, you didn't need those sections. And then what we're left with is now our finished product, which can then leave the nucleus and go into the cytoplasm. Now for protection, there is one thing that we do to it besides splicing, just to help protect the mRNA while it's in the cytoplasm to make sure it doesn't get broken down too quickly. Most mRNA is not going to last forever. It's going to last probably somewhere between hours to weeks. Uh, but we're going to add this poly A tail, or this polyadenine tail. And this is just a whole bunch of adenines that we stick on one end of it uh, that's used just to help prevent it from being torn apart because we will have enzymes that try to break down uh, some of these nucleic acids floating around there that might cause mischief or that we just don't want anymore. You know, you don't want to just turn a gene on and have it be on forever. When you go in the sun and you start activating something to tan, you produce pigment, but if you leave it long enough and don't go in the sun, it will go away. And so these mRNAs do have a lifespan, and this poly A tail kind of gives them that lifespan so they can last a while, but not forever. So it's just a whole bunch of A's that are kind of sitting on one side uh, at the end of that RNA molecule. All right, just a quick wrap up, then we're done. So transcriptions, DNA to RNA. Before we're done and we're ready to do translation, which is the next part of the central dogma, we will have an in-between step uh, after transcription or post-transcription where we will go through splicing, what we'll call RNA processing, splicing, and we'll add on that poly A protective tail uh, to the end of the mRNA molecule to make sure it can do its job. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.